tonight because we're doing a standard American diet meal, which is kind of crazy because it's not normally the kind of thing that I like to do. If we're going to eat like a standard American, meaning mac and cheese and burgers and creamy coleslaw, we might as well do it all the way, but we don't want to at Lifestyle Medicine. We believe that there's a better way. And so I had my family over last weekend, including six and nine-year-old boys. We were socially distanced, dined outside, and they actually spent the, the uh, actually almost three days with us. And we were very careful, masks, etc. But I had to feed these kids and we have no meat in the house, no eggs, no milk, no cheese, no butter. And um, I decided I was going to do a standard American meal. And man, oh man, it worked out. And it worked out well, and you're going to be partaking, well, at least visually. So I'm gonna jump right in. And we have some guests here today that I've never met before, and, or haven't met, uh, unless you were there in January of 2018 at the Gosky, when I did a cooking class for almost 100 people. Um, so hello, Gosky. I know that we have a large number of people from Lifestyle Medicine and a large number of people from the Gosky Center, so I'm just thrilled. Uh, I'm gonna begin by getting things started and then I'll chat a little bit more with you. Um, but let's get, the, let's get the burgers going. And it's easy to call them hamburgers, but they're not, they're burgers because they're black bean burgers. And again, in a bit, I'll tell you a little bit more about why these are so nutritious for you. The first thing the recipe calls for, though, is um, black beans. And I always use organic. I just read something, and I hope this doesn't make you crazy, but I read something just the other day that um, hummus, store-bought hummus, not organic, but store-bought hummus, was tested and had quite discernible levels of glyphosate. And glyphosate is Roundup. And that's why we aim for, I aim for, organic as often as I can. Because the glyphosate stays in our system and sort of whacks things out. And we just don't want that. So I buy even organic legumes because legumes are sprayed just like grains are sprayed and we just don't want that. So I opened this already. This is black beans and I'm gonna drain them, but I wanna keep, I'm draining, but I wanna keep some of the liquid because I need it possibly in just a little while if the mixture isn't as um, loose as I'd like it to be. So I'm just mixing it around here to drain it. And I'm gonna throw it into the um, food processor, but I'm gonna save some of this liquid. If this liquid was, well, you know what? I was gonna say if this liquid was chickpea fluid, out of canned chickpeas or home cooked, but the can had a certain kind of a density that you have to be really specific to make work if you are um, not using canned, if you're, if you're making your own. Anyway, we would call it aquafaba, but it is actually just the liquid from the black beans, but that can be called aquafaba too. So what we're gonna do, I have a food processor. If I didn't, have a food processor or use a food processor with this, I would be using this, a potato masher. I want a rather homogeneous mixture, fewer bean particles kind of hanging out and more compact. And I've tried four different bean burgers and I like this the best because it had made the firmest burger because it wasn't so crumbly. Um, so I'm not going to use this, even though I could, if I didn't have a processor. So if you don't have a processor, you'll just want to make it uh, more, um, more finely mixed. And I'll, I'll talk about that. 
but I'm going to take this and I'm going to throw the beans in here. This is just a 15 ounce can of black beans. And I've saved the juice because again, I may end up using it. Well, I think I'll leave it here if this gets a little thick. The next thing I'm going to add to that, and I'm putting this in the food processor, is garlic. And if you've been to my classes before, you know that I do a lot like this. I'll buy my cilantro, for example. I love getting it from the farm store. It makes a nice little bouquet that I actually keep in water in my refrigerator and chop off some pieces but I pre-chop and I chop a lot of it. This goes back in the refrigerator because I've used what I wanted for my recipes. You could use a larger container, but it makes, it's part of batch cooking. It makes your, um, your meals go more quickly. The same thing with green onion. At the farm store, I bought a bunch of, well, a couple of bunches of green onion. I cut off the backs, put that in the bag in the freezer that I make my broth out of. And I chop uh, the green onion because we put it on a lot of things, um, including soups and stews when we're ready to eat them or in recipes. There are a couple of things here that have green onion in it. So I've already mixed the, and, and I hope you have, and if you don't, they were sent out hopefully to the Gospi and also to Lifestyle Medicine. I saw them in our um, emails. Um, the recipes for longevity and even some photos of what we're, what we're making and what we're eating. And it, um, it includes three recipes today. It's a rather simple meal. And yet, i got to get going so that it doesn't take us too long. So I've already mixed the garlic and the chopped green onion and it called for soy sauce. That is um, part of our sodium. Um, the, the purpose is to add umami, which is that real savoriness that we want when we have a burger. Uh, and um, so I put them all in here and I'll throw them in with the beans. Then I'm going to add, because the recipe in order calls for garlic and chopped green onion, a quarter of a cup of chopped mushrooms. Isn't that interesting? Again, why would I do that? Why does the recipe call for that? And this recipe is from a New York Times celebrated chef called Mark Bickman. And again, I love the recipe, so I didn't change it at all. I bought, and I, you'll hear me say this from Trader Joe's and that from Trader Joe's. I love walking in a store where I can get from the front of the store to the back of the store in a minute, rather than these cavernous supermarkets, especially because I like what they have and I know where it is and their prices are great. So this is organic crimini mushrooms and crimini mushrooms are the darker ones and that was, it was very well priced. Most mushrooms, if I go to Clark's and buy mushrooms that are organic, they're about six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve dollars a pound at two forty nine a pound or for the package of eight ounces, that's about five dollars. Well, just about exactly five dollars. So it's a brown mushroom. Again, that that earthiness, that that um, yeastiness that is what gives um, things special flavor when we're looking for something that has some heft to it and a little bit of, of uh, nuance. Then we're going to add, so we've added, oh, and then spices. The spices include smoked paprika, and it's worth buying smoked paprika to put on um, anything you want savory, including, for example, I just had yesterday lentil tacos out, made a rich, thick brew of lentils, and the smoked paprika gives it that smokiness that's as if you fired um, fire grill the, the chilies. Um, so smoked paprika, I buy organic because again, all the spray stuff, um, and you don't use enough of it for the additional expense to make that much of a difference. So I'm adding smoked paprika, cumin, 
And when you buy cumin, you'll see cumin seeds. They are just little seeds that I use a lot in Indian cooking because I put them straight into the pan and kind of brown them and they get savory. But I can put these same seeds into a tiny old fashioned coffee grinder and grind them. Or of course you can buy cumin already ground. It has a very, very earthy, um, savory flavor. And any kind of um, uh, Southwestern food, Mexican food, is very, very um, usually uh, flavored with cumin. It's one of the main things that go in most Hispanic meals. Again, the soy sauce and salt and pepper. I bought this really silly salt and pepper shaker. My grinder broke uh, one of my salt or pepper, whichever one it was, of my set. And I went to, I was at Marshall's, they didn't have salt and pepper shakers. They had this thing. <laughs> it's an electric salt and pepper shaker. I thought, oh, that's just so odd. But I really needed it because there's such a difference between fresh ground pepper, but even fresh ground salt, uh, but especially fresh ground pepper. But it grinds by pushing the button. So I'm going to put some salt. I'm going to grind it and push pepper. Isn't that fun? I thought it was so silly at first that I wasn't even going to show it to any friends who came um, for a social distance meal. But what I found is with the regular grinders, you use two hands. And quite often if I'm cooking, both hands or at least one hand has been in the food. And I find that this is just really handy, even though I still did get the um, regular salt and pepper grinders. And then I'm adding... The, the cumin and the paprika. Um, we already added some salt and pepper and we're going to blend it now with three quarters of a cup of oats. So look at the nutrition we're ha we have here. We have fiber and those black beans give you additional uh, nutrients that a white bean wouldn't even though both are good for you because they're loaded with different kinds of fiber. But we also, uh-oh, hold on a minute. Yeah, two-thirds of a cup of rolled oats. Throw that in. And as I said, oh, and the mushrooms. And I'm going to blend it. Turn it a couple of times. Now, Marissa, and say hi to Marissa. Hi, Marissa. Thanks for taking care of us. Marissa normally, Hello. Hi, normally will kind of um, mediate the sound of my machine. So I think she probably will. So I'm using the pulse feature. Blending it and blending it. And let's see. All right. Now, I'm gonna blend it a little bit more. And see, if you were doing this, with a masher. You would mash it and then I think you'd probably take a fork or a spoon and blend it a little more to get the moisture and the insides of the beans mashed up enough to give you a more dense um, consistency. Okay. Now, This is what, this is what I have. Are you able to see? I'll turn you a little bit. There we go. Ooh, it's a nice consistency actually. I don't think I'm gonna add any of the beans. If the consistency is too moist, um, you can add more oats. If the consist as the recipe says, if it's too dry, then you add the aquafaba or the water from the beans. You could add water, but I think the water from the beans make more sense because they're really quite. Uh, it's it's quite a good flavor. Okay. Okay. 
So, yeah, I like this. Actually, you know what? It isn't as, well, let me try putting the cilantro in. Now I'm putting in a quarter of a cup of cilantro. Now, how many of you have made burgers? There are a number of ways of actually making the patties, aren't there? In your hands, you mash it up, you put it down. Um, I want these to be nice and packed because I want them to be, um, again, I want them to have body. What's going to happen is I'm going to let them sit for a while and I'll go on to the next recipe, which will be the, um, the mac and cheese. Um, let's let this sit for 15 minutes and then I'll come back. And what's happening while, I'm, well, while that is taking place is that, and look at the consistency. Look at that. It almost, not that we want it to look like ground beef, but it almost looks like ground beef. Um, smells lovely and I'll leave it right here and then I'll show you how I love to actually form my burgers that are an easier way of doing it actually. All right, the next thing we're going to do, I want to make sure I've got water hot. We're not going to use it yet. Okay, let me turn my water lower. But the water for the, the um, pasta, and I'll talk to you about what the pasta is in a minute. Mac and cheese. It is a disaster nutritionally because it is made with one of the most highly saturated foods, satu or most um, the greatest volume of saturated food in our diet um, comes from cheeses. It's a concentrated source, and there's been controversy. Does it really matter? The, the saturated food that you eat. Yes, it does affect your endothelial cells, which affect the, the viscous property of your blood. And if that's not flowing well, things start getting clogged and you start getting plaques and formation of um, uh, the plaques that can cause problems in your, your vascular system. So why not keep ourselves as nourished as we can with the best food on the planet, which is plant foods. And that's all you're going to see me use today. And I'll talk a little bit in, in just a little bit about why, but first of all, let me get this started. So instead of cheese, and I wish you were here to taste this, but you'll make it um, and just trust, trust in the recipe. But instead of cheese, we're putting a combination of some really unlikely ingredients that make a delicious cheese type sauce for a whole grain pasta. And that includes, we're gonna use one cup of Yukon gold potatoes or just gold potatoes. At Trader Joe's, they don't call them Yukon gold, they call them gold because the Yukon gold is a patented trademarked potato. Um, so the golden potato has a certain, um, a creaminess and texture and flavor. I'm also adding a quarter cup of diced carrot. I'm adding a third of a cup of diced onion. Uh, let me get another one of these. And I'm adding a shallot. Now, if you don't do much with cooking, you might not know what that is. Let me get this on and I'll talk to you about those. I don't mean to insult anyone who spends their time in a kitchen and knows your way around a kitchen really well, but I am talking to a number of people and I don't want you to think that if you don't have those skills, you can't make these meals. That's not the case. So I'm putting this on and eventually I'll turn the camera to my cooking surface, but there's no reason to do that right now. Now, I'm going to cook that mixture of potato, shallot, carrot, and onion, um, bring it to a boil, and then cook it for 15 minutes covered. I don't want the water to evaporate and therefore it's covered. 
and you're going to see what I'm going to do with that. That's really, really, really fun. But let me talk to you about shallot. Shallots are almost, they're not purple. They're not as purple as, for example, a purple onion, but they have a different flavor from a white onion. They're milder than a red onion. They're somewhere between a leek and a red onion. And so they have this lovely flavor that's kind of mild and um, it goes very well with a number of dishes where you don't want a real strong onion flavor. If you get them, for example, at Trader Joe's, I'm trying to look for another one that I had here. I can't find it. Maybe I used it. Anyway, they sell them by the piece, 45 cents, 49 cents for one shallot. In most stores, you pay by the pound, uh, three, four dollars a pound for shallots. Um, and this one, I took the skin off so you can see clearly it's two pieces, well, two pieces. Sometimes the skin on this one is what you're paying 49 cents for. So just a tip, if you're shopping, look for the ones that are doubles, big fat double ones. It's still, if you're at TJ, it's only 49 cents. And then of course, garlic. And one of the things that I do with garlic is the same as my treatment of cilantro and um, green onion. I'll peel this entire um, head of garlic and then I'll, um, and if you don't know how to peel them, you know what, let me just show you. Okay, these are big, uh, um, big cloves of garlic, but let me just show you the proper way to do that. Put your flat of your knife on the garlic and whack it. By crushing the garlic, do you see what just happened? It just fell out of its skin. And I have a piece of, of garlic there. I'm gonna put this here, I don't need it, but I'm going to because I'm going to do that to the entire head of garlic, finely chop it and put it in a container that goes in the refrigerator. If you chop garlic, you chop, and you know how to chop with a chef. Oh, let me show you. Okay. With a chef's knife, tip down and chop, 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 chop. That's why if you don't have a decent knife set, at least get yourself a chef's knife. Um, because you just run it back and forth and you can get in a systematic way. I'm just trying not to touch the garlic because then my, oh, you know what? Let me tell you something. <laughs> I was going to say, because then my hands are going to smell like garlic, but let me do it because I'll give you another little secret. Okay, there. Now I have a very fine, oh, I'll use this little piece. Then I have a very fine dice of garlic and this cut like this, one teaspoon is just about one medium large clove. So if you have a container, you've done a large number of garlic um, cloves You've chopped them up and you're thinking, yeah, but my recipe calls for a teaspoon of chopped garlic. Uh, one measuring spoon, teaspoon, little teeny bit right there, like this, is a medium large clove. And you can see there's some left in there because that was a huge clove. So that's just a very handy way when you're cooking to go boom, 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 and be able to get a bunch done. So what about my aromatic fingers? Watch this. If you, I'm gonna use soap, but usually soap doesn't always take it off. Run your hands along stainless steel. And the stainless steel, something about some alloy in stainless steel, no problem. 
um, takes care of the smell of garlic. Da da. Anyway, and I'm going to rinse this quickly because when we make coleslaw, everything's already cut. But the one thing that I didn't cut was the radish. And so rather than cutting the radish on a garlicky cutting board for a fresh coleslaw, we won't do that. All right, but let me show you what else we're going to do to make the cheese sauce. And we'll get to the burgers as soon as I finish putting this in. Let me see if this is cooking. Yeah. All right. So, excuse me while I talk to Siri. Hey, Siri, set timer for 15 minutes. Okay, 15 minutes and counting. Thank you. Okay, so I'm in to make the cheese sauce, I've soaked cashews, a quarter of a cup of cashews, and they were cashew pieces. Uh, there were a number of things. If you are whole food plant-based and you like creamy sauces, creamy salad dressings, creamy um, results on a, um, a, a dessert, but you're not using additional fat, you're not using cream, you're not using butter, um, cashews, especially soaked. Well, if you have a high speed blender, you don't even have to soak them, but I still do. Uh, soaked cashews. Um, will give you a real creaminess and they're delicious and a quarter of a cup is very little as it relates to calories and fat when it's divvied up for a recipe or a, um, a number of servings. All right, and then I'm going to add to it tahini. What is tahini? Tahini is, let me back up, Whole food plant-based, what do we eat? If I don't eat eggs, and, and I haven't for almost two years now, eggs, dairy, butter, cheese, that's all dairy, of course, um, meat, uh, fish, pork, um, lamb, any meat, any animal product, where do I get my fat um, to make the foods taste filling or not, all right, tastes creamy enough, be filling enough. Um, I use a lot of, and, and what does one eat if one is doing whole food plant-based? Well, we eat grains and legumes and seeds and nuts and masses of vegetables, especially greens and things like potatoes and um, fruits, um, fresh and, and cooked. Uh, so a salad every day, big giant raw green salad every day, and a salad dressing, for example, that has tahini, can be tahini and delicious, like a Caesar dressing, without adding additional fat from a processed oil. And why is this better? Because this is sesame seeds. That's what tahini is, ground sesame seeds. So you're getting the nourishment of the sesame seed and the fiber of the sesame seed. And I'm gonna keep saying fiber and you're gonna keep thinking, wow, she must really be worried about constipation. And that's not the only reason that we eat fiber. We'll get to that. All right, another thing, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast and I added some salt and some pepper and some turmeric. So what's nutritional yeast? I buy this one because I can't have, personally, I can't have what's in fortified nutritional yeast. Folic acid is a nutrition, fortified nutritional yeast. And I have a genetic doodah that precludes my being able to use folic acid. I can have folate in all the food I eat but not additional folic acid, which, which is what is added um, when they fortify, plus your B vitamins and everything. But if that's not your case, get the fortified because they fortify it with B, B vitamins and a few other things. But nutritional yeast is a yeast that's grown on, I don't remember what it's grown on. Is it barley or molasses? No, it wouldn't be barley. Um, anyway, it's, it's sort of a cheesy, again, umami flavor. So. That's the, that's the nutritional yeast. And I'm putting in um, 
the nutritional yeast, salt, pepper, turmeric. Now, you may think, wow, that's probably a really expensive way of shopping, buying the spices that you might not use a lot of. I'll show you what we do. I use my turmeric, ground cardamom, cinnamon, ground pepper. Why ground pepper? Just a note, anytime you use turmeric, it becomes more bioavailable. Your body loves it more if you have ground pepper with it. Just a little tip. So I mix all that together and we throw them, we do a, a green smoothie with a lot of um, fresh vegetables, uh, as well as a whole bunch of greens in the morning and some fruit, 75% veg, 25% fruit. And we throw in flax seeds, that's where we get our omega-3s, but we also throw in this mixture of turmeric. So I use a lot of turmeric because turmeric is quite an antioxidant and I just buy it in a big bag like this. Rather than buy a little jar for five or six dollars, I get this big six ounce container to keep this filled and to keep that filled. So just a note. Um, all right. And so I'm putting in the, uh, the, uh, uh, the yeast. I'm putting in garlic and Dijon mustard and lemon juice. And I'll show you another thing about the lemon juice. We have a little store around here called the Fruit Man, and he gets some really good deals on cases of things. Well, I didn't care about the lemons he had until my Meyer lemon tree um, was out of lemons. I picked 20 or 30 of them, froze them, and I'm still eating my own Meyer drinking or using my own lemon juice. Um, freeze it in two cup containers, and then this is still it. But pretty soon it'll be gone. I think I'm down to my last two containers. I'm so sad. And um, I'll buy a couple of cases of lemon from him and do the same thing. Well, not cases, but one case and do the same thing so that I have lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, um, to put on all kinds of things, including our smoothies and including just about any recipe that you make will, in, will include lemon juice. So what we've done in here then is the tahini cashews, salt and pepper, garlic, um, Dijon mustard, lemon juice, black pepper, of course, and the turmeric. And it says optional for the turmeric. You don't have to put it in, but if you have it or if you want to invest in it and use it because it's really highly nutritious, uh, go ahead and do that. So. I'm going to mix, um, no, actually, I'm going to leave this alone because this is going to have, when Siri tells me to, and will actually when I'm ready for it, um, I'm going to put the pan of potatoes and carrot and shallot um, and onion in there, blend it up, and that becomes the sauce for our, um, our noodles, our pasta when we're ready for that. In the meantime, let's make a couple of burgers. In order to make burgers, again, it's either a hand thing. There are burger presses that you can get on Amazon. There are all kinds of contraptions, but here's a thought. I have my utensils in a mason jar and the mason jar cover looks like this. I also have a jar that I get um, veganaise. I'll buy veganaise, a little fat veganaise, because there are a couple of things that I use it for, even though it's so processed, I don't like using it. So one jar will last me a half a year. But this is a veganaise jar, sort of similar, but smaller, like two and a half inches. And this one is, I believe, three and a quarter inches. I like that better because this is my burger bun. And if you looked at the photo that came with the recipe, that bun and that burger were about the same size and it looks really cool that way. So that's why I'm going to make burgers that size. Now, how am I going to do that with this lid? Here's a piece of plastic. I, this was just a little bag, you know, the kind of bags that you get at the store that you put your vegetables in when you're about to, before you check out. Instead of saran wrap, which is, uh, 
it sticks to itself and it's a little harder to work with. I just cut a piece of that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a wad of that. Let me wash my hands again. All right. I'm gonna take a wad of it and I'm gonna pack it in. And if you want, you can pack it. Actually, I knew I didn't like doing it with this. I wanted to do it with my oh, this thing. I like that better. All right. Because I have more control. So what I'm doing is I'm packing it in. And if I wanted, I could pack it a little high because when we go around afterwards while cooking, you mash a little bit, but what we're doing is we're pressing this well, and it has a great shape, and to turn it out, I simply flip it over. And there's that one. And I can do, last weekend, I did a mass of these because I want to recommend that you double this recipe and if you want, triple it. Um, because why not make a whole bunch of bean burgers? And then you have two options. You cook them in advance, and this is what I do. Cook it in advance, put them in the freezer, mine are in there labeled, and when I do a yum bowl, oh, guess what we're gonna do next month? We're gonna do yum bowls. I'm gonna show you in case I forget to say this later, I'll just do it now. I'm gonna show you how to make meals that are so easy to throw together and basically using your leftovers. Let me show you what I mean. So that's one yum bowl. Uh, that's another. That's another. Gosh, you can barely see them, I wonder why. That's another. So in other words, every day, and I have these, you can't really see them well, I'm sorry. Anyway, I have these every day for lunch because it's lettuce at the bottom and then all kinds of interesting things with some great salad dressings or sauces to go over all of these leftovers that I make into these beautiful, almost landscapes of a salad. Um, for 15 years, well, longer than that, I designed landscapes and the name of my company was Nanscapes. <laughs> and now it's Nanscapes for Health because that's what I do, uh, designing the inside rather than just the outside. But I still love decorating the stuff that pleases us visually. And so you make your meals that way. So that next month, I'm going to give you some recipes for things to go on top and some sauces to go over it. Um, but what's going to happen, the reason I brought that up, is that these in the freezer, I'll put in the microwave, or I could put in a pan, to warm up for just a few minutes. And they get crumbled over the, um, over the lettuce in the, the yum bowl. Uh, some people call them Buddha bowls. Uh, you can call them yum bowls or Buddha bowls. And there, I'm gonna make four uh, burgers. And what I'll do, because there's a little bit left over, because this just doesn't matter. So I made a whole bunch of these using this lid method because it's pretty darn fast. And you can see it doesn't stick to the plastic. And now they're going to sit a little bit longer before we cook it. There. But we have a little bit left. Do you see that? So what I'll do is I'll just make my burgers fatter. There. There. And then when we press them down when they're cooking, they are, um, they get a little bit uh, less thick so that you don't have to open your mouth so widely to take a bite. All right, that's that.
Okay. Now, we're going to let that sit for a couple of minutes. And I want to talk to our friends from um, the Gosky Center and introduce a little bit more um, the company that I work with and the reason that I am so passionate about teaching people to eat food that is natural, unprocessed, and as close to nature as possible, and plant-based, or as close to that as you can get. This is one of my newest favorite books, uh, Fiber Fuel by Dr. Bolsovich. He is a triple board certified. He's a gastroenterologist, internist, and he's a, he's a um, general practice MD. And he also has a master's degree in clinical research. So he's a scientist. And as he said, I was a science nerd. That was what I was doing. He said, I met this woman at the end of medical school, we went out to um, a meal or meals. I liked her a lot, but there was a difference because I was ordering steaks and ribs and she was ordering veggies on a plate with grains and beans. In other words, she was a, um, a vegan. And he thought that was odd. And so he did some research about the best diet for people and realized in his research, and he says, in if you want to listen to him, you don't have to buy the book, just Google Dr. Bolsovitz, and it's B-U-L-S-I-E-W-I-C-Z, Bolsovitz, and listen to a podcast. And he said, um, he said, I couldn't believe it. How could I have gone through medical school, gastroenterology, internal medicine, and not have known that a plant-based diet was the best diet for us and our planet. And the point of this, and I'll leave the rest of that alone, the point of this, and the reason I like his book is because of the way he has brought this home, and that is his discussion of the way we're built as human beings. We are, oh, I don't know how many trillion cells, but there are 38 trillion um, microbes that make up our microbiome from head to foot, outside, inside, mainly in the gut. And the gut is our colon. And they have to be fed. And the only thing they eat is plant-based foods. And when we feed them, they, they produce what they call short-chain fatty acids. And the short-chain fatty acids go through our body and feed everything. Our brain, our health, our heart, our vascular system, et cetera, et cetera. And what he was most taken by was a study called the American Gut, um, the American Gut Study. And what they realized was that the healthiest Americans were the ones who, humans, were the ones who had the most diverse gut microbiome, the most diverse population in our gut, and the diversity comes from the foods that we eat. So the more varied our foods are, the healthier we are. Well, this meal, I was gonna say that you're giving, I'm sorry. This meal that you'll be making, and I can take this off now. It's gotta be really, really tender. Uh, has 30 different plant materials in it. Because maybe these are both onions, they're, they're alliums, allium is the, the plant family they're from, but they're different. Uh, in terms of the uh, microbes they feed in our body, this is different than this. By the way, I eat one of these, oh gosh, a couple times a week, this size, a little half one day, half another day, and this is a sweet potato, Japanese sweet potato. They're different, they're potatoes, but they're different because they, de they feed different microbes. The garlic feeds different microbes, the shallots, the, the, the tahini, because that's a seed. Uh, on and on, I could just go on and on and on. So everything we have today is something that's feeding your gut and making you healthier. Okay, so let me 
test to be sure the potato is soft. Yes. Okay, and that's what you need to do. You want to make sure that it's ready. Um, all right, I'm going to put our, I'm going to turn you around. Hello, there we go. Okay, let me move you over a little. There we go. Okay. I'm going to put in here, I have this supercharger stove that has this one burner, they call it a turbo burner. I'll cover it again. That gets so hot because it has an outer ring and an inner ring that this should come to a boil very quickly. And I'm gonna heat my pan, but I wanted to show you what the pasta is. I'm using, this was from Trader Joe's, organic, why? Because they spray all grains with glyphosate and all kinds of herbicides and pesticides. So let's keep our, oh, and the problem, I broke myself off from that sentence because I wanted to explain it better. The problem with those things in our body is that if they kill the microbes in the soil, if they kill the bugs on the plants, you know what else they're killing? They're getting to our microbiome. So what does all of this have to do with lifestyle medicine? The people at lifestyle medicine have a family practice doctor who doesn't just talk to them about medicines. They're not prescribing as quickly as what they're doing is trying to heal. They heal our patients so that they can get off their medication. One way they do that is with nutrition. Plant-based or the closest we can get to it is the best, not required, but it's the best. And with resilience, teaching us how to sleep well and relax and meditate and calm ourselves, that matters. And teaching us what movement is important because movement, resilience, movement, exercise, resilience, sleep and meditation, and calming our mind. Nutrition, not only what goes in our body in food, but also even the stuff we put on it because those things affect our body as well. And um, community. What doctor talks about community, meaning the people in our lives that we spend time with, those things matter. I think maybe that's one of the reasons a lot of us were feeling so off and so different and so maybe sad about what we're living with right now with the COVID because, um, well, there's so many reasons, but one of them is that we are not with the people, or at least not close to the people that we wanna be close to because of fear. So I'm about to do our burgers. I'm gonna let this cook. The burgers take five minutes each side, so let me put them on. And I'm going to, this is a non-stick pan, but I am going to use a spray of oil to, uh, I did more well. Let me get a um, paper towel. I'm going to call it to prime the pan. One more. All right, there we go. Get ready. Look at these beauties. Okay. If you don't have nonstick pans, well, let me back up. If you have old nonstick pans and they're Teflon, if don't use them, um, they're actually dangerous. If you want nonstick pans, Google safest nonstick cookware. And there are products that are like a ceramic, uh, they're, they're ceramic um, alloys that are safe. These pans happen to be something called um, scan pans. They're made in Denmark and I love them. Uh, they're a little pricey and you don't have to go for something so 
expensive. Now what's going to happen is when, oh, Siri, set timer for seven minutes. Hey Siri, set timer for seven minutes. Okay, your timer is set for seven minutes. Thank you. All right, seven minutes for the pasta. We want it al dente. What does that mean? To the tooth. What does that mean? With a bit of spice in it. Okay, now we're making this miraculous. Woo -hoo. <laughs> now we're making this miraculous cheese sauce that is so surprisingly good. Move everything out of the way. And. It to our processor or to the blender. All right, so this is a Vitamix blender, heavy duty, um, mixes things easily and well. And I just saw that they're 150 off at Costco. I think it was either 100 or 150 off. I don't know if it's for the week or if it was for days or what it was, but that's for the 700 series, which is what this is. And it's a good one. Okay. and I'm just going to say it again. If you have a blender like this, I mess up all the time, so I'm just reminding you not to. Um, when you turn it to high, don't stop it, and then start it again on high because the propulsion causes the fluid inside to just almost explode. And it just gets everywhere, especially if this is a little bit loose. Okay. So you turn it down, and then you can start it again and it starts slowly as opposed to explosively. Now, oh, goodness. Okay. Well, can you see that? It smells just like a cheese sauce. Now, you might taste this when you make it and say, you know what, man is out of her mind. This doesn't taste just like a cheese sauce. Well, when somebody doesn't eat cheese <laughs> for a couple of years, there is a acceptance uh, of that may be a little bit generous, I'll say, meaning that it doesn't have to be exactly like it. Now, one of the things that you can do with this, if you want it thicker, is to add a little bit of arrowroot, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna let it just be just where it is. Okay, let's make some coleslaw and get you ready to see a hamburger meal. I'm gonna uncover this. I'll aim the camera if it's not on there yet. Not right now. Okay. All right. So what I'm doing right now is I'm doing the coleslaw. This is the easiest coleslaw I've ever made. If you like thinly shredded cabbage and you want to save a little bit of money, or maybe a decent amount of money, consider a madeleine. The madeleine is a slicing device that, and I love mine, that you adjust 
let's see. You adjust the blade and it gives deeper and deeper and deeper cutting surface. Cutting can be rather dangerous. You can either use this on what you're cutting, but I find it harder to hold on to. So I got on Amazon what they call cutting gloves because I can run my hand along here and yes, it'll cut maybe, but you're protected by the glove. And I'm not gonna do the cabbage because I need this surface, but I can run this along here six, seven, eight times and get a nice thinly sliced cabbage, which is what I did with my red cabbage. So I wanted to show you that for slicing, if you're making a lot of coleslaw, I love coleslaw. Um, that's one way of doing it. And so I make mine this way because I want a really fine shred. However, if you want to save some time, you can do what I've done tonight. I have, and the recipe calls for four cups of cabbage. This is a bag from Trader Joe's of already shredded cabbage, and it is six cups. So it's one and a half times the recipe. I'm gonna throw in, even though it has a little carrot, I'm gonna put a little more carrot in it. Again, why, why not? Not only am I getting the vitamins and the minerals, but I'm also getting something else to keep my microbiome happy. I'm adding to it as the recipe calls for some sliced green onion, and then I'm going to add some radish. And in order to cut the radish, what do I have in here? Oh, oh, cilantro, quarter of a cup of cilantro. Oops, oops. Okay. Really important that we not overcook the pasta. So I'm going to get my strainer. Excuse me. And let me test it. Here, I'm going to turn you around. There we go. Flip these guys over. Ooh, nice. Hey Siri, set timer for three minutes. Okay, your timer is set for three minutes. Thank you. Oh gosh, this looks fine. All right. Uh, I was going to grab it. That's not a good idea. All right. Let me turn you away. Okay. Right there. I have strainer in the sink. I'm pouring the pasta in. And then I'm going to put it right back in the pan. Okay. Oh, that looks great. So this is brown, this is organic brown rice pasta. The first time I made this, I made it with organic quinoa uh, pasta, like elbow macaroni pasta. Oh my gosh, was it good. Uh, the quinoa has so much more protein than, um, than the brown rice does. But I didn't want to use that tonight because I don't know that you'll know where to find it. And I don't want you to be in a position where what we're, what we're making you can't find. Let me just finish with the, um, the radish. And then we're going to go and get the hamburgers. We're going to put the sauce in here. Oh, you know what I didn't do? I was supposed to put the peas in the 
um, cup of peas in the water, the boiling water, but they were supposed to be frozen organic peas, got them from Trader Joe's, and they're not frozen, so we're okay. And here we go. Let the heat warm them up. And throw in our radish. I had somebody say to me, why would you bother with radishes? They couldn't be that nutritious. They're so white inside. They actually have some nutritional elements that we don't get in other foods. Our body loves things that are a little bit bitter. So everything from radishes to cilantro to pickles that don't seem to be very nourishing or nourishing are surprisingly good for our body. Whole food, plant-based, as close to nature as possible. Okay, I'm going to take the burgers off, leave them in the pan and let them just sit for a second and add this okay and add this to the pasta look at this oh it smells so good and it's a beautiful color that quarter teaspoon of turmeric helped yellow it but even without that, it would have been rather well colored from the um, carrot that we used. Think about this. What is this? Potato, carrot, onion, garlic, um, nutritional yeast. What a mixture. Okay. Oh, that looks so good. I'll show you in a minute, but I'm gonna set things up. All right. Does anybody have any questions about anything that I've discussed tonight or tonight? About the food we're making, about your microbiome, or the value of eating as close to nature and as many plants as possible, about possibly being able to do that if you're not used to doing it and how it affects your gut, et cetera, et cetera. This is the dressing. Um, and, and Marissa, type it out as a chat. Marissa will ask me. I'm spreading on here and you'll very seldom see me use oils in anything. I spritzed the pan, wiped it off. Um, most oils, all but a cold pressed, extra virgin olive oil is heavily processed. And even that has been processed because what is olive oil that hasn't been processed? It's an olive. That's where you get your nutrition, is from the olive, the fiber, the nutrients. Everything's been stripped away from this. Why am I bringing this up? Because this recipe calls for organic, I use, of course, seasoned rice vinegar. That is rice vinegar that has a little bit of sweetness to it. Um, and um, olive oil. This entire salad has, even though I went over the four cups that this proportion was meant for, um, I only have one tablespoon of olive oil, one tablespoon of rice vinegar, and then I have the cabbages and the carrots and the green onion and the cilantro. And you will be surprised, oh, some salt, 
and some pepper. This this thing fine. But it's easier, and I'm even knowing that now because I got some of the sauce on my hands instead of getting my hands on. Um, even though at the table I do put out my regular one. All right, so what do we have here? We have a meal that isn't necessarily designed to be eaten together. If I'm having a hamburger, I don't really need um, mac and cheese. That's a lot of food. But if we're talking about standard American diet and you're thinking, wait a minute, I can't not eat the way I've always eaten. This is pretty much the way most Americans eat. It's just different foods. It's just more nutritious food, more healthy food, food that won't give you cardiovascular disease, diabetes, that will actually help heal those things. Oh, let me get you your, um, the rest of the meal. Okay, I'm gonna spoon this in here because last week I did something kind of fun. I served it like this to the family, and then I used a container like this, put it in the container, put some seasoned breadcrumbs, and I don't do regular bread because I can't have the gluten. So it's hard to find really good buns, and I'll show you what I found. I found them in Oregon at a vegan restaurant. They were the best buns, and that's what I have shipped in here. Um, but my husband doesn't have that situation, so we just get his organic whole grain hamburger buns. Um, but anyway, um, I'm trying to think what my point was. Well, I think what I was saying is we don't need, oh, oh, that's what I was saying, the, the seasoned breadcrumbs. So last week, I served it, but then, how is it? Ah, ah. But then I put it into a casserole. I put on top of it some seasoned crumbs, but the seasoned crumbs I used were the everything, the gluten-free everything bagel that Trader Joe's sells. They're really actually quite good. You might think, well, then why don't you use that as a hamburger bun? It doesn't work because they're too, well, you've got a hole in the middle, but they're too, um, they're too dense. Um, it doesn't taste that good as a hamburger bun. So I'm gonna bring you the patties, let you see them. Yum, yum. If we're gonna really make this an all-American meal, I think we need dessert. Oh, so I'm gonna finish my statement. I put crumbs on it. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. I put crumbs on it, and then I put it in the oven at 350 for 20 minutes. And this is a week old, but this is what I came up with. This is, this was a baked mac and cheese. It actually worked for that. These are the crumbs from the bagel when I ran it through the food processor. And what I did with this, again, a week old, well, it's more than a week old, a couple of days beyond that. But in my yum bowl this morning, or this for lunch, I took the crumbs off heated this, I just put it in the microwave and it went right back to being creamy like that. And um, that went in a portion, because if you were able to see that, I, it looked like you couldn't. But if you were able to see it, there were, it's, and that's the way Buddha bowls are, there are sections of all these different foods. Well, I had a section of hot mac and cheese and a section of, of my lentil taco, um, uh, the lentil for the, the taco lentils that were seasoned that way. And um, it was so much fun because it was colorful and it was delicious. So the All-American meal, we've got to finish it with some watermelon. Because that's midsummer. August 4th was midsummer. And if we have a watermelon, 
kind of fun if you have a little bit of a surprise. And this one is surprising because look, it's a golden melon. Can you see that? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put that out in a fun way as if you were at some kind of a picnic. So we have, and I'm gonna serve all this up. This is our meal. We have coleslaw, and this coleslaw dressed this way can be eaten a half an hour from now, an hour from now, or right now. And that's what we're doing. We're eating it right now. So I've got some coleslaw. I have our burger. And this is my gluten-free burger. And I'll show you the brand in a minute. So I'll put this here so that I don't forget. And we're going to put lettuce. Oh, sorry. To make it the way we like it, we're going to put... Did I put the mustard out? I thought I put the mustard out. I'm sorry, hold on. The Dijon mustard was used in something else. The way I like it is mustard, some ketchup on the other half, and you might think this is a little odd, and you all like your hamburgers in your own way. What's odd is that I also like some mayonnaise, but I don't use mayonnaise. So what do I use? My own tofu sour cream. And if you're part of Lifestyle Medical, you have this recipe, but I'll share it next week, next month rather, with the tofu bowl, um, because it's really nice addition to a number of other um, uh, combinations of food. So let's put a burger down. Oh, no, no, no. Let's put lettuce first. I think that'll look prettier. Lettuce, a burger. Mm, what should we put next? How about, what do you do? How about a couple of pickles? These pickles are um, burbies. Burbies? Bubbies. Bubbies pickles. Why would I care? Because they're not cooked. They're probiotic and probiotics are very good for our gut. So these pickles and any, ref well not any, some of the refrigerated pickles that have not been cooked are especially good for our bodies because they feed the microbiome. If you want cheese, I bought this for the boys, the six and nine year old. This is soy cheese. I have never bought this before because I don't eat cheese and I don't like the processed products. But if you really have to have cheese, this is shredded. They also have some sliced tofu cheese. That was pretty good. The boys thought it was terrific. Get that seed out of there. And, uh, uh, well, can't take that off. There, take a little slice of it. And maybe add a little bit of avocado. There. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's that. Look at this beauty. Look at that burger. It doesn't get any better than that. And then we'll have some mac and cheese. And do you see how it's firming up? There we go. And we have our watermelon. And I would say bon appetit, but it's gonna take you a bit to make your own. But this is a lovely meal that actually, 
unlike almost any other meal. Oh, clean it up there. Almost any other meal that you could get that would look that good would probably tear up our cardiovascular system, mess up our glucose, blood glucose, and metabolic system. But this you can eat because every bit of it is healthy. The only thing that's processed are the, is the pasta, but it's whole grain, and the bread, but that's whole grain. And this is what I found. We were in Oregon, my husband and I, at a vegan restaurant. They made a vegan burger and I said, oh my gosh, where did you get these buns? And they're, the brand is Happy Campers, wild buns, ancient grains, um, gluten-free, four grams of fiber, three grams of protein. And you get them from, by just going to Happy Campers and then you have to have them ordered in and all of that. But it was worth it to me. Happy Campers, glutenfree.com. There you have it. Okay, how are we doing with time? Oh, we're great. Anyone have any questions? Uh, good evening. This is Joelle. Uh, I have a question for you. Hi, uh, Joelle. It's good to hear from you. <laughs> Thank you. It's good to see you. It's very um, good to see you. I have a, a question regarding the black beans burgers. Yes. Uh, if you, uh, okay, I know your preparation is, uh, is for four, four servings. Yes. Yes. Uh, what if you want to eat one at a time? Can, do you need to cook all of them and then freeze them? Or can oh. you freeze them? How can you yeah. do it? Thanks for asking me that because I said there's two ways of doing it. One is to cook it and freeze it. The other way is to to freeze them raw 